the only way you know what's in a person's mind is through what they write or speak or do. That's all about the change. Neuralink is one of the new channels that will allow us to interface directly with the brain. One of the things you can do with a Neuralink interface or any sort of computer interface is learn how to remotely operate heavy equipment, a machine, as if you're putting on a robot body. Are you scared about artificial intelligence? I have a very cautionary feeling about it. We are now at the point where the growth of information and knowledge is outstripping our ability to appreciate and understand it. Should we stop doing what we're doing? You can't. The genie's out of the bottle. It is. The problem, in my estimation, is that we don't teach people ethics along with technology. Welcome to Beyond Belief. Sir Charles Schultz III worked at Martin Marietta Aerospace for 10 years on weapon systems and computer-based automated test equipment. Now, he wrote the nuclear EMP test software and many other notable military aerospace projects. He has been knighted and is currently working on research in robotics and artificial intelligence. Sir Charles, always great to talk to you. Thank you, George. It's a real pleasure to be here. We finally meet after all these years. It's taken huh? 18 years. <laughs> How did you get involved in all of this? You know, I've always been fascinated by science and I always wanted to understand how everything worked. When I was a child, I figured I'd be living and working in space so I'd better learn everything I possibly could just to make myself capable of supporting that sort of a lifestyle. You love space too. I absolutely I mean, you love so it, You're so excited yes. about Mars and those anomalies you found and stuff like that. Absolutely, and it's something I feel people should know about. You have dealt with something that is coming across this planet in record numbers and that is the Neuralink system. I'm Absolutely. going to have you explain that. Hardly a night doesn't go by on my radio show where somebody calls in and says, George, there are 25 UFOs up there. It's the Neuralink satellite system. What is it? <laughs> well, Neuralink doesn't have anything to do with satellites, of course. It's actually based on a very simple premise. Through all of history, the human brain has been an isolated item. And the only way you know what's in a person's mind is through what they write or speak or do. That's all about the change. Neuralink is one of the new channels that will allow us to interface directly with the brain. And there are two of those types of channels that exist right now. One of them is functional MRI. You know, we have people who are comatose and unresponsive and unable to communicate. Right. Well, we have a means of seeing what's in their mind now. We literally can get a picture of what they're imagining in their heads. And so they've found anywhere from one out of three to one out of six of these people are fully aware but unable to say anything. And so they'll say, okay, I'm gonna ask you some questions, yes or no questions. And if the answer is yes, think of a green square. And if the answer is no, think of a red triangle. And then they talk to them. And looking at the monitor, they can see what that person is visualizing in the head, and they've established communications with them. Well, now this is amazing. We can see locked in people actually are many times aware. Well, now Neuralink gives us a direct channel I don't know if you're aware of the experiments that were done by Elon Musk's group to teach a monkey to play a video game such yes, as Pong. amazing. And so they plant a chip about the size of a postage stamp with thousands of tiny electrodes like needles into the tissue of the brain in an area where there's a map of your body called the homunculus. And when you think of moving, there's a certain firing pattern of neurons. So they collect that firing pattern through Bluetooth to a program that analyzes it. And the program figures out predictively where you're going to move. And so the monkey used a joystick. And the program figured out what his moves were going to be before he did it. Before he did it. Then they disconnect the joystick and the monkey's playing the game. But the actual link is through the neural link to the game. Then they remove the joystick. And the monkey sees the game and thinks about the movements he would make. And the computer sends those codes to the program and plays the game. Now, why is this important? There are many people who are paralyzed, whether paraplegic or quadriplegic or worse, and they don't have a means of communicating. So this gives them the ability to interface an artificial nerve system or actually augment their own so they can regain control. They could even add limbs that are missing, such as prosthetics, and control them directly by thinking. So this is one of the many things you could do with Neuralink. There would be chips in your head, literally. Absolutely. Right? And in most cases, they're about the size of a postage stamp. Uh, there's a company called Synchron that's making them about an inch and a half long. 
And they're one of the major competitors with Elon Musk's company, Neuralink. Uh, one of the things they discovered... He's the one putting up the satellites. Well, yes, he's putting up satellites, but they're for Starlink, internet communication. And actually, it works pretty well. Uh, it depends on the area you're in. Uh, and it's so popular, I think they're running out of channels. <laughs> really? Well, I would get it myself, but it's not available in the area where I'm moving. Would you get a chip in your brain if you needed it? I don't think that I would at this time. I feel that the you never buy the earliest version of a technology. And that's one of the reasons I'd put forward. I would wait until it was more developed. With anything? With anything, sure. With anything. What are the benefits of the, doing this long range, though? Okay, so imagine you have to work in an extremely dangerous environment. You'd rather have a robot in that environment than a human being that could die. Okay. And so one of the things you can do with a Neuralink interface or any sort of computer interface is learn how to remotely operate heavy equipment, a machine, as if you're putting on a robot body. You can work in areas where there are pressures or temperatures or radiation that would kill you instantly by using a proxy, uh, an avatar, if you will. Interesting take. Science is moving way too fast sometimes, Sir Charles. Well, it would seem in times past when our technology wasn't as advanced, we had time to see the ramifications of things that we were doing. Today, that's not necessarily the case. Within a month or two or three or a year, they want to go to the next stage without fully analyzing what the repercussions might be. Is there a downside to this? Well, there can be. Um, the same sort of technology that can plug into your brain could also be used to write memories or erase memories or alter your personality. And I understand from, let's say, a wow. psychotherapy standpoint, this might be helpful. But you don't want it to be something against a person's will, and you don't want to do something that's going to violate their, their personal sovereignty, in a manner of speaking. Could they turn you into a Manchurian candidate? Well, there's no doubt that that could be done. I mean, that's been done with psychological and drug programming in the past. Absolutely. So there's that possibility. On the other end of this uh, spectrum, there are, well, there are very good things you can do as well. Restoring damaged memory, um, possibly augmenting parts of the brain that have been damaged by tumors or illnesses or cancer. You can do a lot of things with this sort of technology, including saving memories and experiences that otherwise would be lost. There's an old African proverb that says, when an old man dies, a library burns to the ground. What if you could save all of your experience and the knowledge that you would otherwise lose at death? It's like the Truman Show. Well, in some ways it is. And I think that a lot of people are unaware of how deeply this could lead. If you can implant sensory inputs into the mind, you could create a false world around somebody and they could live in basically a sandbox universe uh, of their making or, of, or not of their making. So it's something to consider that it's possible that this could be an invasive project that literally leads to living in a dream world. Are they doing this to us now, Sir Charles? I would doubt that. There are certain things that would seem to be consistent in reality. And if you were making a false reality, it would be too easy to slip up somewhere. I know a lot of people might point to things like what they feel are glitches in the matrix, as you've heard of these right. events. Three fellows with the same shirt on a bus in a row. How did that happen? But I don't think that we ourselves are in a reality of mankind's making. Um, some would argue that our whole world is a simulation, and that's hard to prove or disprove, but it's a possibility. Artificial intelligence, is it going too far too fast? I think that one of the things people fail to recognize is about 90% of the funding for the development of artificial intelligence comes from military or financial projects. And that isn't a good sign. Um, we often talk about the lone inventor or the military team programming an AI. And you have to wonder if such a thing they create would actually be sane by our standards. And that's a real worry. Good point. Tell us about singularity. What does that mean? Ah, the singularity. If we look at the growth of human knowledge, we know that it isn't linear. If we take the number of facts we had at year one and compare it to the number of facts we had at year 1000 in the Middle Ages, we can see that the amount of, single, uh, of knowledge about doubled in humanity. In another right. 500 years, it doubled again. In another quarter of a millennium, it doubled again. We are now at the point where the growth of information and knowledge is outstripping our ability to appreciate and understand it. And the singularity occurs when it is no longer possible to predict what happens next on a daily basis. Let's look at Gaia's Deep Space, William Henry, talking about singularity. Certainly.
The singularity brings with it the good, the bad, and the ugly. It can bring, bring dramatic changes in problem solving for humanity in terms of economics, physics, chemistry, medicine. We're talking about miraculous new discoveries and solutions to very human problems. The bad is that it's gonna cost us millions upon millions of jobs. As much as 90% of the human population will be unemployed when the singularity takes place. That leads to the ugly, the potential for Anarchy is absolutely astounding, and nobody seems to be talking about that potential of unleashing the power of artificial intelligence. Take a look around your life, your daily life. You go into a coffee shop, you go to the dry cleaner, you see a policeman, you see a, a taxi driver. Any and all of those jobs will be eliminated from a human perspective and replaced by artificially intelligent robots within 10 years. When we're talking about the singularity eliminating jobs. We're talking about almost any job that involves any kind of routine. Doctors, lawyers, eliminated, replaced by AI robots. Menial jobs, however, street sweepers and construction workers, this is the type of job that is very difficult for machines to do. Anything that we can do with our human hands and involves movement in our feet are jobs that will ultimately be secure. Thinking jobs, however, are going to be eliminated on a human basis and will be replaced by machines. One of the advantages of, of achieving the singularity is that it unites human intelligence with machine intelligence to solve human problems. Problems with the environment, problems with biology, problems in medicine. If we can solve these problems, we're talking about miraculous cures for diseases. We're talking about a new way of living, but the cost is unparalleled and beyond our comprehension. Artificial intelligence can have a revolutionary impact on our politics, on medicine, on our environment, on biology, because it's of, of its ability to access massive amounts of data and, and perceive patterns that would take perhaps a human years to be able to perceive.